Welcome to Speak On It, a web-based social media forum. The Florida Department of Health Peer Education for the Soul Partnership with Shop Talk Inc. presents Speak On It, a web-based series for youth and young adults that focus on the importance of building and maintaining healthy relationships, featuring an engaging panel, thought-provoking dialogue, insightful testimonies, a dynamic host, a live DJ, and of course, relevant conversations that address social norms and trending topics. This three-part series will be pre-recorded before a live panel, and audience will feature street talk, interviews with local youth and young adults. Episodes that will be included are Him Responsibility, Girl Trippin', Two Can Play That Game, Couples Edition. So let's get into it. Be truthful, you gotta be honest. What is a healthy relationship? A better yet, what does one look like? Who going first? Mm, sorry, no, <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna start to the right. We're gonna start to the left, like Beyonce. We're gonna start to the right. Um, a healthy relationship, not toxic, not toxic, not toxic, not toxic, not toxic, no anger issues, open communication, comprehension that you can communicate and not understand what nobody's talking about. Exactly. Mm, that's true. Mm. What you feel like? Um, trust is important. Um, like Mom said, open communication, understanding, not listening to me to get what you have to say out, but understanding what I'm saying. Then you can speak. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, Pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all say amen. <laughs> <laughs> what do you feel like a healthy relationship is? Communication. Um, seeing eye to eye. Acknowledging. Mm, I, I need some. I need some case names. I need, um, <laughs> I, I need somebody to elaborate on. But see, you can say communication. But what does communication really mean? Some people think communication is just letting them know oh, where I'm going or where I'm gonna be at. But it's more than just that. What do you feel like a healthy relationship is? To me, uh, I believe a healthy relationship is when you allow God to direct it. Mm. So. I know that's helping me in my relationship because communication wasn't so big until we were starting to, you know, pray about it and give it to God. So that would, I think, the perfect relationship when you allow God to direct your path. And he'll show you, you know what I'm saying? Because I had a big thing was, hey, I'm a female and whatever I say go. But it don't work like that in a relationship. You got to compromise and you got to be able to sit down and talk about it. So I think when you allow God to lead your <laughs> what do you feel like a healthy relationship is? I feel like a healthy relationship is just basically like you said, communication, you know, learning how to, you know, lead and follow sometimes when necessary. Because some people just, you know, feel like, oh, okay, you want gay sense, I'm gonna give you a sense, so boom. Dudes be feeling like sometimes that, you know, they want to want you to be submissive, but they don't know how to lead properly. So I feel like, you know, you can't be talking about some, oh, you want me to cook, clean, do all this extra stuff when you sit at home playing video games. <laughs> but did you go grocery shopping? Well, see, but, you know, but it's 2019. Uh, you can get money off on the video games. Oh. That's fine. <laughs> but if you're not making no money off of it, you know, you can't do that. Nah, I ain't say the checks coming in right away. But if you come back. <laughs> <laughs> but her relationship is basically this, you know. It dep- it's some people feel like, you know, they have their different opinions on healthy relationships. Some people feel like, you know, just chilling. You know, I have to always tell them exactly where, like you say, or where you're going and all that stuff. Like, just depending on your point of view. What do you feel like? Um, I think the biggest thing for me would just be honesty. Like, just be honest with me. I mean, I know I can be a hothead. All my friends know I can be a hothead. And I would be mad in that instance, but at the end of the day, like, you was honest with me. I can't be too upset. I mean, but don't get me wrong. We still going to have to have a little conversation. 
conversation about what you didn't eat. <laughs> no, but, like, what's the difference? See what you talking about? That? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, just be honest with me. Be open about it. Um, just be open minded about a lot of things. Cause just cause it's my perspective, you may see it differently, and that's just coming at understanding. Like, okay, I get where you're coming from. And, you know, actually accepting that, not saying, okay, yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying, but back to what I had said was, what's this? <laughs> yes, mine is, like, you have to learn to love yourself before you can love somebody else. Ooh. Ooh. I heard that. You got to say it one more time. Say it one more time. You got to learn to love yourself before you love somebody oh, oh. else. One more time. <laughs> <laughs> one more time. <laughs> Good vibes. I'm getting to know each other more, being able to talk and laughter and going with the flow. Um, no. I don't know. 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 I don
Okay, so I'm like an affectionate person, so preferably I go somewhere loud just for the simple fact of so now you have to, we have to be like this for you to hear me, you have to lean in. Just so we can be close, but we can actually like, like I now I have to pay attention to you, like because it's a lot going on. But I'm trying to hear what you're saying, so now I know I have your attention. So we go to the concert or something. Right, yeah. but it has to be somebody we both like, though. Oh, you make me cry. Well, I'm like eat, so I want to. I want to go somewhere like where we can eat. Like a big old buffet. Like, I'm not paying, so we don't matter. Oh, oh, oh. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not paying, but I just want to like be able to like be able to get food and then get and then just sit there and talk like we can eat and talk like we can do two things I like to eat and talk. So boom, boom, boom. Yeah, you can talk both. What do you think is the perfect day? I feel the perfect day is. Anything involved? Why don't I have to look at my phone? Like if I'm looking at my phone, it's not a good thing. Because yeah, yeah, you you're boring. You're boring. Like if I'm on my phone, like okay, yeah, so on social media, like this date's pretty much over. So you know, but I like to eat too. I like fun things, like adventure landing, like stuff we can interact with each other. Like you said, the movies is not really a good one because you're not getting. Like, I mean, it depends. That's okay. The movie can be. You can talk before you get in the movie. But who's gonna talk during the movie? You can be into the movie. You're not really it depends on the movie. Exactly. Last but not least, what do you feel like is the perfect day? Oh, I feel like the perfect day is chilling, over dinner, and I like to eat. And then, like you said, I like to talk. I don't care about that. It's a place where you can get to know each other, good vibes, good conversation. Yeah, if you're the only person that's initiating the conversation, that's a problem you decide to date with them. And you can just leave that. But, um, yeah, I think the perfect day is dinner. So on this next question, I mean, I don't want to see no raise your hand for me ask this question. Y'all yeah, ready? Mm-hmm. Who do you feel like is the more committed in a relationship, girl or boy? Oh. Right, one more time, hands down. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you feel that is more committed, boys? Like you know, females. Well, it's 2019, so it's some ain't you know about <laughs> nothing females too. But most definitely females, because dudes like to play games sometimes. You know, they like to make it seem like they all about you the whole time. They got a whole nother you know situation. life daily <laughs> situation. Just like I seen a post about Justin Lair just said she posted. And she was like, you got to ask people like how single are they? Cause you can be like, oh, I'm single whole time. They had a situation are going single, on. Single? Yeah, but are you like single, <laughs> single? Like you not dealing with nobody. So you know, you got to make. I just probably um, say who's the more. It's the difference because who's who's more committed in totally a, a relationship? I'll say women. But who's more committed when in love? I have to think the guys. Why is that? We're not sure. Yeah, I'm like, I'm 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 like, 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 I'm <laughs> no, but seriously though, because when a, when when a guy is in love, it is is very deep, and and that's what you're you're really focused on. That that's your life, like that's really your life. That's your backbone. That's something that you don't want to leave. And when you're just in a relationship, before you get to that in love in love space, you might still want to play around a little bit. Females, once y'all start talking, they're ready to be. <laughs> they can be in relationships in two, three months <laughs> these days. For real, I feel like I feel like it takes time. It takes time to develop a, a, a true relationship. Um, but these days, people try to fall in love so quick. Women, they 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 get attached and, and fall quickly. 
And when you care for someone, you're committed to that. So that's why I say in a relationship, a, just a just a relationship, women, but in act when we're speaking about in love, I get you. Or guys. <laughs> what do you feel like this one is a Um, it could be vice versa. Like it's because once a guy is truly in love, then he'll give you his all. But if he's not in love and y'all just dating and y'all just doing whatever, then that woman is more committed because her goal is to get to that point. <laughs> I personally feel like it depends on the time that you are in the relationship. So in the beginning of the relationship, it's supposed to be easy. But I feel like you can't play the game because they kind of get to know you. But once they actually let it out, it's like, okay, that up. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I think the situation said for us to be a lot of 
Selfish uh, will destroy you. So it's Say that one more time. <laughs> I believe that selfish will destroy you. So it allows you to grow. Because you're going to do half of yourself for someone else. Just life is just like, I always say, like a sewing machine. You put your hand in there, you put your hand in there. You press the button, but you might get more than one hand. So you press the button. Well, you might. You know what you want sometimes. But you, you, <laughs> but you hit a sprite, and sometimes it might not be a sprite. So it could be something. That means that you should put somebody in there. Kind of to what she said about growth, like okay, boom, I was in a relationship, <laughs> and like it was just I was giving so much, and I was like, "Man, me, let me drive my car and like everything," and then he like crashed my car, how can he get into it? And I started being selfish, like you know, you can't do this, you can't do that, you know. Kind of you know, start working out more. I need to up too. Okay, so like. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see nothing wrong with that. I don't see nothing wrong with that. <laughs> because, like, I feel like if you're not selfish in certain aspects, like, you're going to take advantage of people. 
Now, I know some friends who like, all right, so we'll, we'll take into account some like dudes that you talk to, right? So like, I feel like if I talk to the dude, that's my dude that I'm talking to. No, you can't talk to him. Like, so I'm <laughs> <laughs> about that. You can't. I'm so like, you know Yeah, yeah, you don't share parts with your friends. You're not supposed to. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I have to say be selfish because, like, I, I had a similar relationship to her where I would let him, I would, I would say he was like a walking ATM and receive gas. We got gas. We got gas. We got gas. So when he needed gas, I got gas. When he, he had a snake, I fed the snake. Like, I was just doing too much. Yeah, it's a snake. We can talk about it. But, <laughs> so, yeah, I just feel like at once I kind of just was like, no, I'm not doing this, no, I'm not doing that. And kind of, he was mad about it, but I felt better about myself. Like, okay, he was mad, but I felt better. Like, okay, I'm not just falling with him. It's important to be selfish at times. It's important to be selfless, but also selfish. And, uh, for the simple fact that when we care for someone, we we'll often put people before ourselves. Whatever they need, whatever they need to do, we're gonna to make sure that they're in a good position, to make sure that they're happy. We we'll oftentimes put everybody else in front of ourselves, even with friends, we put them in front of ourselves, and we'll miss out on opportunities. We'll, we'll we'll be late to things that we have to do. We'll just not show up because. Person needed that, they needed me here to do that. So I feel like it's very important to be selfish because not being selfish, it can hold you up in life. All right, ladies, 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 what do you feel as if is an automatic deal breaker for a relationship? Mm. I repeat, what are automatic deal breakers for a relationship? Not situation, relationship. <laughs> <laughs> um, the automatic deal breaking in a relationship when the trust has one out the window. Um, when you begin to know how that urge, you don't want to be around that person, and little things start to get nerves, you get agitated. You know, right then that the situation or the relationship has gone downhill. For me, it's disrespect. I do not tolerate disrespect. I don't care if it's your friends, relationship, none of that. So once you start to disrespect me. Talk about anything else, but disrespect, especially your parents too. I, which I, my ex is disrespecting his mom. He just pissed me off. Bro. I used to hate that joke. So I had to, had to break up. I don't know how you tripping because you treat your mama like this. You treat your mom worse. Ain't dealing with that. What do you feel like it's a deal breaker for you? Ooh, this is a <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're not the boy. I'd say disrespect. Like, don't disrespect me or call me crazy. Verbal abuse. So you like saying he and all that. We can talk about it. Yeah, you're the IG and all that. You still don't. I want to know all those things before we even get to the relationship. Right. I mean, he can smell it with the first date. But second, third, fourth, fifth. Yes, sir. He will do it. No, he won't. What do you feel like you're doing, something and they're just, they're just not listening and it's the same thing over and over and over again and so you can't cut it off just getting agitated not wanting to be around that person avoiding things in a relationship okay <laughs> real life story <laughs> Real life story. Real life story. Real life story. <laughs> <laughs> so I was dating this dude. So when we first started talking, he told me he only had one kid. I don't have a problem with kids. You feel me? Like, you know, I see these kids all the time. So come to find out during the relationship, he had three kids. Mm, so he got that. <laughs> but then what made it worse?
worst was they was like three different people and then they was all super young. Like one was like three, the other one was like one, the other one was like six months. So to me that just shows like you're not committed to nothing. Like you got three different, they young, like at that point it was just like I don't want nothing to do with you. Well, I feel like you something. <laughs> you're right, that's not it. But you're not committed to the person that you're with. That's just it. So, I mean, oh, so if, if the baby was one and the next one was six months, that means you was cheating, period. No, period. Don't, period. Period. Don't period. Don't something like city girls take. So, yeah. Um, a deal breaker for me in a relationship, a few of them would be um, constant arguing. Constant arguing. I can't do. Like I said, we should be able to talk about anything without arguing. Another deal breaker for me is once it becomes a physical aggression. When, it, when, you, like, when you feel like you have to put your hands on me. If, you, if, you gotta, if I got to put my hands on you, I don't need to deal with you. Um, and I, the last, my last deal breaker would be I had it, but I forgot. Nah, yeah, I, I, just, I just can't do it. I can't. Oh, you can't stress me out. I understand. People gonna get on your nerves. I understand you're gonna get on my nerves sometimes, but when it becomes a situation where you're stressing me out, I can't do it because stress uh, stress affects our health, and I just value my peace, so I'm not gonna be with someone that's stressing me out. Um, having yourself together. Like, don't come at me if you don't got no job. <laughs> I need you to have some type of stability because I'm not I'm not your mama. I didn't come to come take care of you. I, if, if you can't take care of yourself, then I don't need to be with you because I need to. Can we get some snaps, please? Yeah, some snaps, please. I'm a dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working about it. I got I got to deal with my own things that I do all legal all legal businesses. So you got businesses. So, 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 so when I say having yourself together, like you need to have, I need some type of income when I when I go out with you, I don't need oh babe, you gonna pick up check oh babe, no. So, um, <laughs> I'm gonna need that. I'm gonna need you to. I'm gonna need you to provide for me because at the end of the day, I'm looking for somebody to provide for me and my future children. And if you can't do that, then you can take that dough. You're not ready for the male supposed to be a provider. You're not supposed to be. A, you're not. You're not ready for a relationship if you don't have your. If you don't have your stuff together. Yeah. If people don't realize that these days, which is aggravating. For real, you need to get that speed. I want to inside. Um, so it's a three part thing emotional instability, mm-hmm. emotional unavailability, mm-hmm. and emotional immaturity. So, like, if you don't have your emotions in check, all the stuff that y'all said. Next 
Thank you. <laughs> I mean, we're going out and fun. <laughs> show myself in order for you to see, you know what I'm saying? Oh, this is where it's easy access. Because that's not. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, that's just me. I have to cover my yeah, yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah,
Yeah, mental stability. There we go. She took it out of my phone. Boom. Okay. Honesty. Loyalty for sure. Um, your integrity. I need it. I need to know what it's like. Um, God for sure. And definitely mental stability. Because if you look crazy upstairs, then I'm going to look crazy too. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. I just wasn't gonna wait till you touch me with a paper like you've been doing. But um, I say respect, loyalty, communication, intimacy. Just since nobody wants to say it, but um, yeah, intimacy and just like like she said, I she a little crazy. I'm I'm a lot crazy at the so I'm gonna need you to be like the yin to my yang because I don't need somebody to balance me out. Like we both can't be crazy because one by somebody. I'll say um I'll say love, I'll say happiness, I'll say loyalty. And under loyalty I'm gonna go ahead. I'm not gonna say trust, I'm not gonna say honesty because if you're loyal to me, I shouldn't have to that's that's all in the same thing. I'm gonna say love, loyalty, happiness. Stability and freedom because you have to have some kind of freedom because everybody has their own lives and you have to be understanding <coughs> to people's lives. Yeah. If you can't deal with it, then you can take some stage left. Some sort of spiritual connection. I know everybody don't have the same beliefs, yeah. so you have to believe in something. Um, respect, intimacy, but not sexual intimacy. Be able to be intimate without touching each other. Mm. That's, that's a whole nother level. <laughs> 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 um, emotional availability, like I said before, and loyalty. Okay, that's good. Okay. Um, openness. <laughs> well, I think my five were equal to majority what they said because it's pretty much in the same category. You're either gonna get you gonna get communication, you're gonna get trust. God is one of my big things. Um, you gotta be open. You gotta be happy. It's one. You gotta be happy. You can't be in a relationship if you're not happy because your happiness will start deteriorating the relationship. Because guess what? When you're not happy, then uh, the spouse not happy. <laughs> and it just go out it go off balance. So So and, and just a moment before you ask. So what do you guys feel like the is the biggest misconception in dating in two thousand nineteen in this period? Mm-hmm. Oh we already this one. Oh the biggest thing is when you don't put it up front. Uh what you want. Like I wouldn't say do's and don'ts because we all have a different perspective. But what you want out of a relationship, you gotta let it know up front. Because guess what? You don't start, you don't put it out in the forefront in the beginning. Then once y'all begin to date long period of time, then that's when you start getting all the sorry things that you don't want to sell. But yet y'all would have went over in the beginning of the relationship, we could have worked that way through it. So I think, you know, up front is what it is. Okay, yeah. Oh, um, kind of like what she said, basically being up front, but I said this said before, like, Y'all need to let it be known what y'all are doing. Because nowadays, like you said, you could be thinking, you know, y'all working towards a relationship the whole time. They just hooking up or hanging out. You know, y'all need to let it be known. Like, okay, are we moving towards a relationship? Or are we just chilling? Like, all right, what are we doing? Like, I'm big on that. Because I don't like going in, <laughs> not knowing what's going on. Because I'm thinking we about to, you know, we about to be my boyfriend in a couple months. The whole time, you just not doing your thing, yeah. You know, so I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, I was special. You know, the whole time it's my pocket. Yeah, right. <laughs> what is the biggest misconception of dating in 2019? I would say that the biggest misconception of dating in 2019 is the fact that because we like each other, we ain't got to be together. <laughs> <laughs> I say that because just because you're like, that doesn't mean you're for each other. Because if something says, 
going to be big issues amongst you all that you know you can't work out because I know that I'm not going to put up with this and you know you're not going to put up with that. But we're trying because we like each other so hard. You're not going to let other people go. I'm not going to let other people go. But we're trying so hard because we like each other. We want to be with you. No. <laughs> it don't work like that. Because you like people, you don't have to be with them. You know, you just have to, you just have to learn how to be friends with someone. But we, we definitely don't have to be together because we like each other because that can be very toxic. Y'all can chill. You don't have to do each other, period, but you just got to understand that that can be very toxic. Oh, I just like being straightforward. Like, don't waste my time. Like, let me know yeah. what you got going on before you even approach me. Like, if you're just trying to hang out, go that way. And because I really don't have time for that. Like, just tell me what you want from them. And I'm like, oh, okay, then I know how to maneuver to that. Don't just wait until we, like, a month or maybe three down the line. You're like, oh, you want this. Then it's like, oh, okay. We are stepping in resume 2019. Um, I just think the term dating in general is just being confused in 2019. Um, like just because you're dating someone doesn't mean like you you have to let it be known. Are you like inclusively dating, or are we just dating? Like I'm still getting to know you over that step. Because if that's the case, like dating, you can still go on dates with other people because you're still trying to figure out what you want. I feel like when it's on that one on one, that's when your relationship. But dating, like I can, I can date you. I can date that person. We're, we're going on a date. Like it's nothing to it. Yeah. I sometimes I feel like social media plays a big role too. That's a lot of that don't last because of social media. That's the meat. I don't think that it necessarily not last because of social media. I feel like a lot of people. So we live in an era of instant gratification. So dating is misconstrued. Okay, so <laughs> it's a gratification. We can like the internet age. You can put something in your browser and it comes up immediately. So we used to get stuff quick, fast, and in a hurry. So dating isn't as defined as it used to be because everything is rushed. Everything's sped up. Nobody courts anymore. We don't go on dates anymore. We internet and chill. And then two weeks later, y'all boyfriend and girlfriend. I don't even know them. Girls, imagine because I don't even know. You know, that messes it up because you just dive into something so quickly you don't know who you're dealing with exactly. Sometimes they don't even know themselves like that, so how are you don't really know them. And yeah. also, like, we are researching, like, you can make it. Okay. Send to the group chat. Take a while now, so I'm going to see if y'all have an answer for this one. What role do girls and females play when it comes to finding a family pregnancy? Ooh. Right now, right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. It's just really all the way up to the person I was following. 
saying anything and still doing it good. So. <laughs> she is it. No, I'm not talking about that. You want to talk about that. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about that. So I feel like, so my approach to sex is always, Unless it's legally. <laughs> so for, you know, sexual intercourse that can produce babies, <laughs> if you're not ready to have a baby by that person, do not have sex with that person. Because anything can happen. Like a common break, he might take it off. She might take it off. So, what might be a hole in the dome. I don't <laughs> I mean, what do you mean? Where, what is it? Where are their roles? Like to understand, like how do you, how do you, what are your opinions for it though? I mean, I don't. I think that if you are not ready to raise a baby, you shouldn't have a baby because you put yourself in a bad situation sometimes, and you also put the baby in a bad situation because if you're stressing, that's going to affect your pregnancy, and then you bring a child up and. In a in a world that's really just they they're not ready for they didn't deserve to come here and struggle the way they struggle. So I'm a firm believer in planned parenting. I am. Um, it happens. Things do happen, unfortunately. But I just don't think it's just it just it's not good for the babies all the time. I think that you should think smart before you get into. Free condoms, birth control, shots, uvul rings, the rings that go insert your vagina, the rings that go inside of your arms. Look into the necessary precautions before you get involved with the guy because once you have a child, it's no longer about you. It's about you and that child. Your goals and your dreams are put to the side. If you have that mindset, you might say, oh, I have a baby, but that's not going to stop me from going to college. But you, do you want that extra stress on yourself for having to take care of Think smart before you have sexual intercourse and reach out to your resources. A lot of people might be allergic to condoms. Look at the different types of condoms that you can use. They have female condoms. Mm -hmm. So think smart before you get involved with a man. And make sure that man is thinking smart too because he has to care about you before he even takes it there with you. Mm -hmm. Single auntie at the cookout, you know, and that's okay. But yeah, I said that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. It's, it's completely fine. You know, chop the wine, get you to the. But yeah, I personally want to be married because you know I want five kids, and I'm not trying to have five kids and not be married. You're not gonna leave me with five kids and think it's gonna be easy for you. Like, no, it's gonna be fun. I like that. I understand that she was stressed. She's hold on. I want that marriage, you know, I want that big family, the, you know, the gingerbread houses on Christmas, stuff like that. Like, you know, I want stuff like that. Yeah, but I'm saying with my family, like, I want to start my traditions and whatnot. Like, I believe it's like that. I believe that it still exists. Um, you got a lot of people that just out here playing games and stuff these days, but you can't let the situations that you run into, the people that you run into, deter your true feelings. Like, if you know that you're a major fan of love, you know that you want to get married and stuff, be you. Stay true to you. Keep look. You don't have to necessarily look, but don't give up on the opportunity just because it didn't work out for so many people. Everybody's not going to play you. You have to understand that everyone's not going to play you. So I think that plays a major role in why a lot of people don't want to get married these days because people just play so many games these days. But I personally would like to get married and also have my own family. You know, um, it's fun. It's good times. When I was coming up, I had we had a lot of fun times with the family. So um, 
I'm a very family oriented person, so I still look forward to marriage one day. And the whole family, the whole nine. See, I agree with you 100%. Because I, I met this guy like two weeks ago, and he was like, Do you want to join my relationship with his other oh, partners? Oh, y'all trying to get yeah. out of the Yeah, so they got to leave it with me as well. And I was like, oh, I believe in just, you know, one man, you know, one wife, under God, covenant, and stuff like that. Now, he made it sound good. <laughs> <laughs> no, it made it sound good. Yeah. 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 No, it made it sound good. should be boundary set with the internet. I think kids shouldn't be on Facebook just for the internet. Like nowadays parents are more loud and they have Instagram, Facebook. They don't even know they stuff. They haven't created who they are first. So they take in any and everything they say and that's how they create who they are. But once you figure out who you are, it's gonna be hard for you to just accept anything. And that takes a long time. I'm twenty five and it took me a long time not that I was wild in the day, but it took me 25 years later to understand who I am as a woman. And I know six and seven year olds not there yet. So they just accepting anything. They just being fed anything. So I feel like that goes to parenting too. Also, monitoring. You need to monitor what your child is on and what they're watching, who 
people that hanging out with those type of things because they don't know how to turn on and off the internet. So, yeah. Okay. Yes, I really definitely apply to the all age groups because, especially me, because it got to fight. Like, people get to a fight or something, or people are quick to share say, um, supposed to be sacred stuff on the internet. They mad at you, or if they feel the type of way, they just go put it out loud and expose. Like, that's so childish. I hate but yeah, and it's probably a lot of kids that get exposed thinking you know, they in love and whatnot, and it's not cool. So yeah, you would definitely monitor, and it should be boundaries set, like it should be an age limit. Like back in my space, they had to be a certain age to get on there. You know, people use a lot, right. but still, you know, I feel like it should be carefully monitored. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like as far as cyberbullying, I feel like it's more so like high school or like middle school, I think, well, I mean, it's a different age now. But like when I was a kid, like, it was more like we were just bullied, like, in school. Definitely. And then, I mean, like, everybody, well, I'm not going to say everybody, but, you know, you got caught fat, you you know, you got picked on for your clothes. Like, I feel like everybody went through that stage. But I feel like more so as kids, like, that's more what it is. Um, but then when you get to, like, the high school, then it's, that's when the social media really becomes so big because everything, at least in my high school, we had iPads. We didn't have books. So everything we had was right there. So it was nothing to get on the internet, post something that's going on in class. So I feel like cyberbullying is more like grown up at this point. Yeah. Cyberbullying is just really run by older people. It's older between 20, 21 and up if they can use the phone. But I just feel like they just kind of, you know, pick on something that they find something that they like about you. Just cyberbullying is just something that they, they don't have nothing else to do. Like, they so bored with their lives, they got to just feel like they just pick on you. So, that's how I feel. Like it should stop with. Okay, so being in both worlds, working in middle schools and high schools, and also being just on the internet every day, cyberbullying is happening everywhere. To the middle school level, high school, elementary, even. I'm going to say that it's the worst in middle school, with the middle school age kids. Because the same access we have to these things, they have it as well. And like we all said, it's not being monitored. So um, they, it's so bad in the middle and in, in grade school that they actually have it where now if you're bullying and cyberbullying, your parents can get sued for that. Like that's how serious it is now. It's not something that's taken lightly. Yeah, the same way when you say you had the tablets where you can just post something that's going on in school. These kids, they have their phones. That's why I all play the phone game. Put your phones away. Because they can take a picture of anything. And they're going to post it. And they're going to send it around. They tra- it travels faster because the same way we have all these apps and stuff, they have all these apps. And these kids are smarter than, like, they're not smarter than what we were coming up. Like, some of y'all say they don't know who they are. These kids, like we, when we were coming up, we, we had things that were frowned upon that we couldn't do, we couldn't live these life. But parents are more so open to letting kids express themselves and do what they can be themselves so you're able to discover yourself at a much earlier age. Now, you're not going to learn everything because you're a child, of course. But they, they are aware of who they are and who they want to be. And because they do these things, they dress these ways, they, whatever it is, they're picked upon because, because of it. And it, it goes from they gonna put you on Instagram, they're gonna put you on Facebook, they're gonna put you in every group. It's a, I'm telling you, they got a group chat with middle schoolers from every school in Jacksonville. They're gonna put you in that. It's going it's, it's more viral, it goes more viral than us. a lot of the stuff that I see on the internet, like, oh, I don't see it on my timelines and stuff. I see it when people tag me in or somebody screenshot and send it to me. I don't see that kind of stuff. You know, um, but I just know like how serious it is and these kids really are trying to kill us. If you don't have Adults going around trying to kill us because of people that are attacking them on the on the internet. We we lower ourselves and we go back and forth with people on the internet when we're when somebody's trying to bully us. Because me, you try me, I'm gonna shine on you. I'm gonna put a whole show on you on social media. But that's what you ask for. But kids, kids are more fragile, so they can't take that pressure. And it doesn't matter how tough they think they are. Things affect them deeper than they deeper than they realize, and they don't understand why they snap so bad because you were truly affected deeper than you thought you were. Like, so it's just like they're more fragile and it's happening more and more. And 
although they, they have that law in place, it's still, I still don't think that they're doing enough about the bullying and the cyberbullying here. So, that's my piece. <laughs> <laughs> Get Yourself Tested campaign. The GYT Get Yourself Tested campaign is a youthful empowerment social movement to encourage young people to get tested and treated as needed for STDs and HIV. This concludes this episode of Speak On It. Special thanks to all the panelists. Special thanks to Bogle Photography, also Shop Talk Inc., and of course, the Florida Department of Health in Duval County Peer Education for the Soul Program. Once again, I'm your host, That Boy DJ. See you all next time.